Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 68, I'm going to be talking about the anatomy and functions of the cerebellum. So let's get right into it. Now here we're looking at a picture of the cerebellum, and the cerebellum would be this part here. Then of course we have the brain stem that is just anterior to the cerebellum, and of course superior to that we have the cerebrum. Okay, so this is just looking at a section of the brain, the section showing the cerebellum. And just to let you know, if you want to revisit what I've already said about the cerebellum, you can go to episode 26. And in episode 26, I talk about the functions of the cerebellum, and I go into a little bit of detail. What we're going to do is we're going to build on what we spoke about in that episode and talk a little more about the anatomy and the functions of the cerebellum. Just to recap, cerebellum is Latin for little brain, so it's kind of like it looks like a little brain at the back of the at the back and the bottom of the brain. So posterior and super inferior, sorry, uh, that would be where the cerebellum is located. The functions of the cerebellum, of course, we're dealing with integration, regulation, and coordination of motion. So you want to move from one location to the next. You want to move your arm. You want to move some part of your body. The cerebellum is very much involved in integrating the signals, regulating what's going on, and coordination, coordinating that motion. So that is the cerebellum and what it does. Now, here's a different picture of the cerebellum. And you can see we have the cerebellum here. It's a drawing of the cerebellum from Gray's Anatomy. And here you can see we have the brain stem. Of course, at the top, we're going to have the midbrain and then the pons and the medulla. And what I want to emphasize here is that we have three pairs of fiber bundles that are attaching the cerebellum to the brain stem. So those fibers are called the cerebellar peduncles. And we have three pairs of them. You can see here we have the superior peduncle. And this is pointing out one of the superior peduncles. And then we have, of course, the middle peduncle. So that would be these fibers here. And then we have the inferior peduncles, which would be, of course, beneath the middle peduncles. You can see one here and one over here. So we have these three pairs of peduncles, the superior peduncles, middle peduncles, and the inferior peduncles, and those connect that cerebellum to the brain stem. And of course, they're going to connect to different regions. The superior peduncles are going to connect to the upper pons. So here we have the pons, and that's connecting to the upper pons. The middle peduncles are going to connect it to the lateral aspect of the pons. That's right here. And then the inferior peduncles, it's going to connect to the dorsolateral surface of the upper medulla. Okay, so here we have the medulla, dorsal, that would be kind of to the back here, um, and lateral. So we're dealing with the upper medulla in this area. So that's where the inferior peduncles connect. All right, so we have all these fibers that are connecting the cerebellum to the brain stem. All right, let's move on from there and take another look at the cerebellum. So what we're doing here in these pictures, these are pictures of a cerebellum from a human. But in the top picture, we are looking at the posterior view, so from the back of the head. And here we're looking at the anterior view. So this is the side of the brain stem. So the brain stem would normally be in the front here. So posterior and anterior. Now what I want to show you is that we have three lobes in the cerebellum. Now just like it, the brain has lobes, cerebellum is a little brain. It also has its lobes. And those three lobes are the anterior lobe, 
which of course would be the one that you're seeing here. So these would be the two anterior lobes. And then if you look from the back, you get the posterior lobe. So you can see this is one posterior lobe and this is the another posterior lobe. And then we have what's called the flocculonodular lobe, the flocculonodular lobe, and that would be inferior, but it's kind of small, so you can't see it as well. Well, it's not shown in this picture. Um, it's kind of blocked by the posterior lobe. So we have the anterior lobe, posterior lobe, and the flocculonodular lobe. Those are the three lobes. Now, the largest lobe would be you can see that here, the posterior lobes. You can see that's bigger than the anterior. And the smallest would be the flocculonodular lobe. There's one more structure that I want to talk about, and that is called the vermis. And you can see the vermis right there, um, kind of in between the two lobes. Now, the cerebellum is involved in integrating, regulating, and coordinating motion. So it needs to get input from the regions of the brain that are responsible or, and that are involved in that process. So it needs to get information from different parts of the central nervous system. These three lobes are going to get information from different parts. And the anterior lobe gets information from the spinal cord. Okay, So you have um, these peripheral nerves coming into the spinal cord, giving information about what's going on in the periphery of your body, what's going on with your hands and your legs, your extremities. And it's going to take that information, of course, and integrate it with some other information that the cerebellum is getting. The posterior lobe is going to get information from the cortex. And we've spoken about areas in the cortex that are, that are responsible and that are involved in the process of movement. And lastly, the flocculonodular lobe is going to get information from the vestibuli. So that's in the inner ear. The vestibuli are heavily involved in proprioception. Um, being aware of where your body is. So anterior lobe getting information from the spinal cord, the posterior lobe getting information from the cortex, the flocculonodular lobe getting information from the vestibuli, and then the cerebellum is taking all that information, processing it, and helping you to have coordinated motion. I hope that makes sense. That's pretty much all I want to cover in this episode. As usual, I want to invite you to visit the website at interactive-biology.com and you're going to get more biology videos there, more resources to help make biology fun, transcripts of these videos, and just a bunch of other stuff. So head on over there, interactive-biology.com. This is Leslie Samuel. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.